this is one of many videos that, that really should be retitled as uh, version one, two, three, four, five, six of a single topic, which is new foundations for redoing all of education. Uh, the web is changing uh, things so much because it's really mastering informing. And so much of educating has disappeared, and we have mostly teachers informing. And uh, the web is not only making the informing something students can readily do themselves without a teacher, but it's meaning that informing yourself's role in all the future will be so easy and, and, and global and thorough that training people to do it is almost a waste of time. And so there's this vacuum where education is training people to do something that used to be vital, stuffing things into their heads. And now all that st stuff that they would stuff into their heads is going to be available to everyone in the history of the world from now on on the internet. And, you know, it takes so long and it's so difficult to index what you stuff in your head, it's hopeless. Uh, so they're never going to have brains that compete with what the internet's going to have available for everybody on every phone, right, wherever they are, walking around 24 hours a day. So people have not thought clearly about this. And I'm not sure that I've thought any more clearly than some people, but I have thought a lot more seriously about it for 20 years and written five books on it. So <laughs> I know a little bit more than some people. And I've read 2,000 books on it. Um, so here are a couple of foundations. Imagine a school system, K to 12, and then college, postgraduate school, postdoc. Or imagine a school system all the way up to age 30, where you put editing back into schooling, where you have total quality measures of the quality of cognition, the quality of reading, the quality of writing, where you have standard intellectual tool sets that you regularly install in entire global school systems every few years, like the quality movement upgrades the tools that workers apply to problem solving steps, where you have uh, mass workshop learning and research and invent events, design events that replace classes. Uh, where you have uh, homework and classwork that has actual customers so that getting customer requirements and satisfying the customers is a part of your work as you grow up in school, and where you marketing of your the results of your work, where you don't just make trash for 20 years, which is what you do in schools now called homework, but you actually make things that are then uh, delivered to actual customers and marketed to the world, and where you have to stand responsible for whether this helps the world or not, or whether it's a waste of time like academic papers. So let's go back and uh, review them one by one. Putting editing back into schooling. One of the, if you hire people from colleges, and I hired from the best, Stanford, MIT, Carnegie Mellon, uh, Harvard, uh, University of Chicago, Northwestern. Um, I hired, or, or University of California, I hired from the best for many years at Xerox. And uh, one of my big complaints about everybody that I interviewed and uh, even some of the people I hired was they had had almost no expense, experience of editing their own work. And they've certainly not edited uh, any pieces of their work into real excellence. And, uh, you know, so I'd ask them, have you ever polished, edited, and changed and improved one piece of your work into total shining excellence? And the answer was always no. We've never done that even once in their life. We've managed to be able to educate people for 30 years without them ever editing and polishing one piece of their work into shining excellence. They don't try for excellence. They don't even know what it looks like. They have no idea how much work you get from the first draft to something wonderful. So we teach them how to get to first draft. We don't teach them how to get from first draft to wonderful. I'm interested in wonderful. Most businesses are interested in wonderful. Uh, so I want to put editing back into school. I want to, uh, and one way to do that is studio courses, where half or more of all courses are events, and the other half are studio courses. Studio courses are you're given totally different materials, totally different customer. You have two weeks to build something for them. And then you have a public grading by the professor or the customer going down each one and saying what's good, what's bad, who's best, and who's worse, and why, every two weeks. So eight competitions a semester, uh, say three courses like that every semester, 24 uh, times two is 50 a year, times four years would be 200 competitions a year. Now, they do this in design colleges. They do it in no other departments in modern universities. It's a big mistake. It needs to be done in business. It needs to be done in medicine. It needs to be done in lots of places. And if you did do it, uh, what they do in design schools that they find so wonderful, they don't make people creative, they say. With this process of so many tries and so many different directions with so many different criteria, they find creativity already in people. You try so much stuff in so many different directions with so many different aims that you and the professor mutually discover what you're great at that no one expected. Wow, we discovered this creativity in you. It's as new to you as it is to me. I didn't expect it. You didn't expect it. We found it. You are great at this. Why? And then you, you investigate that with the rest of your life. Uh, total quality cognition. 
So I'm particularly interested in total quality reading and writing because I was never able to hire anyone who could read or write competently. Never. Not one. Ever. Never. And so I had to teach them how to read and write in order to work in my group. And by reading, I mean uh, you should be able to diagram for me the 200 main points of any chapter you read and be able uh, to tell me the geometry of thought that characterizes the chapter and how it evolves during the chapter. Uh, anything less than that is not reading. And certainly these executive summaries of the Harvard Business Review make us the opposite of reading. Um, standard intellectual tools. It's now in total quality programs. You have this 36 step solving process. Problem, root problem finding, root cause finding, root solution finding, root implementation finding, root impact and error finding, and normalization of the procedure if it worked. And so those were the six major steps. And each of them had the same qualitative, quantitative, et cetera, uh, sub steps. So you had 36 steps standard solving problem solving process. You talked to 100,000 workers in the whole company. And then every four years, you gave them a different tool set to do those 36 steps. And of course, in the beginning, you, you start with a really elementary tool set, which the blue collar workers find challenging because it's discipline, and the white collar workers find utterly boring and beneath them. And then four years later, you install a better one. And it takes four or five years for that to percolate to the 100,000 people, and then we get good at it. And four or five later, another one. 20 years! and five generations of tools better, and you are getting 100,000 people every year to do MIT, better than MIT quality PhD dissertation research. Fuji Xerox 20 years ago had 1,200 work groups every year, blue collar educated without college uh, graduates in the groups, doing better statistical and workplace productivity inventions than MIT PhD dissertations. Really, that's not an exaggeration. So that's what I call standard intellectual tool sets that you revise and upgrade across whole systems or, or geographies every four or five years. Uh, then you have mass events, work, mass workshop events, uh, invent events, research events, design events, uh, replacing uh, classes. Uh, instead of people sitting for an hour and a half four times on four weeks, which is really just a way to keep professors employed, uh, you do a one 12 hour day where they do mass workshop events like 10 parallel teams with four persons each, uh, going to the library and the web, researching a topic, and then uh, meeting, uh, listing all the ideas they can get from the literature on it and models of its uh, questions, uh, answered and unanswered questions and uh, directions of evolution and its main ideas and results. And then based on that questions for the periphery people and then for the middle people and at the end of the day for the experts in the field, do interviews, Skype interviews with them. By the end of the day, you have a 500 page book that's best in the world on that topic. So you go from knowing zero on the topic to writing the best 500 page book currently in existence on that topic in one day. And I've done this with college students and people in Procter & Gamble have been doing it for years with work employees, and it really works. It's a thrill. You get the book. You can sell the book. And it's so much better than making homework that you just throw away. And that's just one of many of these events you can do. Um, homework and classwork with customers whose requirements you must meet. This idea that your requirements are the only requirements that count is such a distortion of what you do with all the rest of your life. So schools really create sappy people and narcissistic people who uh, are willing to quit whenever their miserable little laziness requirements are met. And, you know, in the rest of life, you don't get to do that. <laughs> you have to redo and redo and redo because the customer didn't accept what you gave or because they bought from the competitor because you gave them something lousy last time. And you, you lose your job and your salary because you didn't sell enough. So we need to get that out of schools where it's just your personal little criteria that determines the unit and where it's the teacher's little opinion with you. That's so collusive. We need to get some third-party customers in there to see whether they want to use it or not. And if it's useless, then you fail. Um, now, I'm not saying that's every assignment, but, boy, that should be a lot of them. Uh, marketing ideas as part of producing. In schools, you produce things. You never market them. You do no marketing of them at all. In real life, everything you produce has got this extra seven times more time and effort and budget of marketing. So, you know, making it is nothing. It just disappears and goes and gets lost in the noise of history if you make it, however excellent. In real life, it's the person who spends seven, you know, you in software, you spend seven times more on marketing. Like, oh, dear world, I'm here. We're great. You spend seven times more on that than actually making a great product. Seven times, 700% more on letting the world know you exist than you spend on making something great that exists. Uh, this is common sense in software ventures, but the school systems ignore it. And so you end up everything you create, no marketing for it at all for 12 years, 16 years, 20 years, and then 30 years old, you pop into the world economy is useless. Now, imagine a school system that gets all of these things I'm saying. 